We are rolling. Oh, oh, grow up, fuck. That's how we fucking open this podcast. Hey, I went on a date with my wife to see Spider Man. Hey, man, she chose the movie. Yeah. No, no, genuinely, she chose the movie. Yeah. Too embarrassed to tell us the truth. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you order a Coca Cola and popcorn? Also? Uh, we did have popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had um, yeah, mixed popcorn. And, uh, we also smuggled our candy. No, we smug we smuggled our own popcorn into. Shut up, really? Yeah, yeah. Organic. Yeah, organic. I'm on a diet. <laughs> if I can watch my weight. Would you like Pepsi? No, I like Perrier. I they, only eat, you know, organic corn. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. cause it's vegan. It's yeah. like whatever. Vegan don't microwave corn is. it. Heat it on the stove. <laughs> you don't want any weight from that shit. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's only 169 calories. It's great. Did you have any butter on it or? No, 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 no. Just plain old corn. Nice. Nothing yeah. like a good old dry popcorn. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like chewing on your watching, uh, uh, <laughs> watching teenage movies. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. Yeah. Didn't uh, do Did anything. Did you like the movie? No, it was pretty average. Yeah. Just like every movie today. Pretty much. All movies are average. Everything. It's all disposable. We spoke about this yeah, before. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Let's throw back to season two. Yeah, don't worry. Content is still as shit as what it was yeah. two seasons ago. Actually, the only movie that I saw that was actually worth watching was the Don't Look Up. Oh, yeah. Don't Look Up. Yeah, that was good. That was sick. And the Sandra yeah. Bullock movie. Whatever the fuck it's called. What? Uh, bad, the bad one? No, the new one on Netflix. There's a Sandra Bullock movie. Mm. It's fucking gangster. Is it? So sick. Oh, I, don't know. I think I might have watched it. Oh, actually, no, I have watched it. She, yeah, yeah, I have watched this. It was so good that I can't remember the name of it, nor can you. <laughs> I can't remember the name of it. It's, all I know is Sandra Bullock was in it. Uh, who was that it? one and Don't Look Up. So Don't Look Up was really good because, I mean, it's obviously like throwing like shades at everything currently it's, in the world. It's a very accurate depiction of the world we live in, in my opinion. <laughs> 100%. The world is doomed yeah. with climate change but exactly. nobody's doing shit yeah, yeah. It's, it's like <laughs> quite the contrary like yeah. everyone is increasing their output don't know? look up but just don't look over here like covid like, don't look over here I just don't look in front of you right <laughs> that's, 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 the real message is don't look in front of you don't look at the potholes that you're gonna fall in and ruin your life with yeah, don't look yeah. at inflation don't look at any of that shit don't look at anything just assume the world is perfect and what we tell you is correct everything huh? what we tell you is correct yeah, yeah. Don't, don't look over here don't question us don't question no Anyways. question, or you get censored, mm-hmm. right? Great, great uh, intro to the podcast. The Unforgivable. Is that the one? Yes. The yes, Unforgivable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's very amazing. good. Yeah, yeah. Sandra Bullock is amazing. Anyhow, I think it's just important that we talk about a few things that are yeah. happening. Yeah. It's pretty much how we're going to set up this this stuff. This podcast. Because yeah. we, we basically do all this pretty much every morning we start. <laughs> let's have a let's have an advisory uh, call where we can discuss business uh, priorities. One hour later, Bitcoin. The world, politics, climate change. And we're taking live calls today on 1-800-ASK-STEVE. <laughs> no, but uh, but actually, I think the thing that kind of uh, triggered this podcast was, um, well, one, I just came back from a, like an emergency trip to Canada. Yeah. And, uh, and I was there over the holidays as well. I was there December, January, beginning of January, came back for a few days and then jumped back. And that's not a short flight. No, it's brutal. Like, like, yeah. like 16, 17 hours of flying. Yeah. You it's went insane. Did you go business? Uh, is, yes. Okay. Very good. The fuck. Anyway, I'm not judging, judging you. Me, I'm fuck. not judging you. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am, but I need to sleep, man. <laughs> anyway, so um just an emergency uh trip back to Canada business class. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I would do the same, don't worry. Um Anyway, you got judged because no, 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 no. I, I like judge. comfort. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. You need comfort. Anyway, you're getting old, dude. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I what what prompted this podcast was um, Canada is different in so many ways and mm. has changed so quickly in such a short time. All of Canada or parts of Canada, or should it all be tarnished with let, the let, same brush let, right let, now? Let's just use one brush on this one. Yeah, but yes, I'm from Quebec, the province of Quebec. And so my experience is more directed at Quebec and Quebecers. But um, so for context, I'm half French Canadian um, uh, from Quebec City, actually. And so I have a, a, an admiration for, for Canada, but also the culture that is Quebec, which is a minority within North America. So I culturally, I love that place. But what's crazy is I was there last summer as well. 
and uh you know the disconnect with covid with crypto with kind of the state of the economies and stuff like that you can't help nowadays but compare kind of countries and how they're dealing with specific things how they're dealing with their economy how they're dealing with covid mm-hmm. how they're communicating what their policies are etc cetera, etc cetera. and and you can't help also being in dubai you can't help but you know, measure Dubai versus other places, right? Because every country is dealing with it in its own way. Yeah. And media has led us to believe that we need to compare ourselves all the time to Australia, New Zealand, uh, Japan, China, Dubai, yeah. Saudi, UK with God bless Boris and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> South America and everybody. And so I hear you help- really good parties. Yeah, especially birthday parties. Really good birthday parties. Yeah. Yeah. Quite the, quite the guy you have. Over yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Leads by example. Anyways, um, anyway, so I, I went back and what was crazy was when I was there last summer, I was like super pro crypto. Guys, what are you doing in crypto? To all my boys, all my friends, and like, what's going on? People were dabbling, but there was no mm-hmm. general kind of consensus that that was what everyone should be doing. It wasn't really mainstream. It was still super underground. Regulations were not very pro. But was this in the summer, right? It was last summer. Last summer, is, yeah, so 2021 summer, which is amazing. Which is like six months ago. Right? Because that time, every, and, yeah, everything was going crazy. And then this winter, I went back for the holidays, and I just got back a couple of days ago. Everything's different now. Everyone and their mother is in crypto. Whether buying coins, whether trying to find a way to get into mining. So let me just sell. Whether, <laughs> whether, Everyone and their mother whether like, whatever it was, everyone... That was potentially on the fence in the back, you know, in in the past, you know, six months ago was now somehow dabbling or playing and super sold by the kind of premise and and philosophy and idea behind Mm -hmm. now Bitcoin or crypto. And obviously, I think that's multiple reasons. I think inflation and I think lots of kind of economic kind of data points were kind of revealed by the government as well. Yeah. And you could start to see that people were starting to be scared for their own money. Hmm. Well, a lot of things kind of fell into place, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Because all these things are connected. When you th- and when we think about it, we talk about this all the time. But yeah, definitely the whole going back to your first thing, the COVID pandemic or the just, what's going on in Canada at the moment astonishes me as an outsider. Yeah, yeah. Someone who's got family there but also spent time there. Like I had this beautiful. I said to you this morning, this beautiful romantic idea of Canada, like completely destroyed now. Uh, it's so, so weird, you, man. Yeah, it's like, so weird. It's like, so disappointing. I, I'm, I'm half Canadian. Like, my mother is French Canadian. I consider myself Canadian, right? And it's like, I was like you. I was super proud. I thought yeah. I came from and was part of a very progressive country with freedom of speech and human rights and all that stuff being at the forefront of what they stood for. And just the way the government, I don't want to get into the details. I don't want to make this political, but just in, in the in the way that they've managed COVID. Yes. Yeah, whether it's by the curfews, the lockdowns, the vaccination passport, the lack of information, the transparency, the politicization of fucking COVID. Yeah. Like everything that they've done yeah. has shocked me. Yeah. Like totally shocked me. Right. And I don't want to get into what's right and wrong, but let's just say I'm surprised by what they've done and I don't really associate to it. And it's, I feel like they've let me down as a Canadian. I'm kind of like, really guys? Like seriously? Yeah. And it's, it's just not what I thought Canada and and I guess more specifically Quebec would represent. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, I'm not in the shoes of these politicians. I'm not. I don't live their reality. I I recognize that the demographic of Canada is not the demographic of you know Dubai or the UAE, and comparing one to another is probably unfair. Um, you know, social systems of healthcare versus private healthcare, demographics of you know 30 percent of the population being over fucking 65, mm-hmm. like. There's a very different reality on the ground, but generally speaking, super surprised by how Canada's managed things. Yeah. Super surprised by how politics has really, uh, you know, wreaked havoc when it comes to COVID, COVID information, uh, mm. and, and just the general public discussion of, about it. And and it's weird, like like you know, I grew up in the Middle East in a monarch i grew up in saudi and i you know i i love saudi like i had a great upbringing there and for all the things that people might hold you know saudi you know 
accountable to, I, I generally are, I'm very grateful, right? And sure, there were many things I disagreed with. But then when I moved to Canada, I was like, wow, this is crazy. This is like a whole different world. This is mm -hmm. like, this is freedom of speech. This is, you know, you know, what, you know, kind of the, 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 the West is, is fighting for. Oh, it's cool. What an experience in terms of life. And then you come back to the Middle East and you come to Dubai, which is kind of like an in-between. Yep. And it's it's funny <laughs> being a 36-year-old man. As you get with, wiser. Which, which, <laughs> which is supposed to have all this wisdom and mm. to reflect and be like, wow, what the fuck is the West doing? Yeah. <laughs> I totally, totally. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with democracy? <laughs> what, like. No, I totally relate. Like system down, basically. It, yeah. it just feels like the West is really like. I don't think the system's down. Flooding. I think the system is, uh, the system is, is like jarred, right? Like it conflicts on itself. <clears throat> I relate to the, um, to the pride aspect and like the UK. Like we've had some rough times over the recent years, I think. Uh, when I think about it, and it's more about representation, right? When you think about leadership and you think about how it would lead by example, it's that misrepresentation that is portrayed, you know, one internally. So like if I have conversations with friends back home, I mean, the Brawl Brexit saga are really the, the misinformation in the lead up to that. Um, and then kind of what followed, like internally, there was a narrative and externally sitting from the outside is like, you're looking in this like glass window going, well, guys, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. can we have an honest conversation? So you saw how that kind of like broke down. So I totally relate to that piece in terms of the, um, the whole system down thing. I mean, it's kind of a global, well, not global, it's a very Western thing at the moment, like democracy and principles and value systems are being pushed to the brink and you you can see that right like sitting here in this it's like this it is a bit of a rose garden to an extent right we're, we're super lucky certainly during the whole pandemic thing with how yeah, things yeah. were managed, were managed. Well. Yeah. you know there was a bit of a rough time with that that lockdown but fundamentally we got the business back up and running it was difficult there's a lot of graft a lot of like online hours but we adapted the situation the infrastructure was put in place so it's kudos that really is like a lot of praise. I said it on Twitter the other day, but I didn't actually like tag Dubai, right? And you were like, Steve, what are you actually mentioned Dubai? Yeah. It's fucking... but, it, but it's true. It's true. <laughs> There's a lot of praise to be had. And fundamentally, we've lived a very normal life for like two years. But it's very sad being an expat or immigrant, however you would actually phrase it, in living in the Middle East, watching what I deem important principles of Western society be Do you not think... just challenged, but actually devoured in parts of the world so i think this is probably the best next question do you think as expats we have a right to measure our countries that's a really good question because what do you mean but what do you mean by measure like measure measure or judge well judge we do inherently i think of course because i have but, a british passport exactly i don't have citizenship in in the u.s no, no i understand but do you think we are well placed to be able to fairly measure i think what they're doing and have an opinion about what they're doing judge comes in inevitably but do you think we are we have the right perspective so i think there's a it's, a it's a really good question but i think there's a there's something beautiful that i've felt since being outside of the uk or kind of outside of anything it's the same with anything in life when you sit on the outside and you stop allowing your emotions to gauge your kind of decisions, actions, words, you look at things far more objectively. The good thing about being on the outside of Western society and Western media in particular is that you can objectively look at something and determine yourself what you kind of deem valuable. So for example, you, you can hear a news story here. And I mean, in the UK, BBC and Sky News, they spin propaganda left, right, and center. They criticize North Korea, but they're guilty of it themselves. Yet you can you can you can take that story at face value or you can dive deeper. Personally, I find myself diving much more deeper into topics to form an objectively a, an objective opinion that I that I myself think about. But Outside why, of that. But why does that matter? Because I care about the UK. I, no, I no, but I mean like I mean I'm just like what do you, what do you mean what does it matter? Just for the benefit of the, the argument. Like Yes, we have a more diverse opinion. We have mm -hmm. multiple perspectives because we're exposed to different things. Well, you can shut out a lot right? of the noise. No, sure, yeah. but but if you're within that market mm -hmm. and only within that market and mm -hmm. only have the perspective of that market, 
And somehow the argument could be said that you have a clearer view of what's real and what's relevant to that place. Right? And so I'm just wondering. Mm. It might be very close-minded. It might be very nationalistic. It might be very singular view, whatever, whatever the fuck you want to call it. But it might be the most accurate depiction with the full perspective of what's real on the ground. And so whatever... X, Y, or Z culture or society mm. or government is doing is completely irrelevant to the reality of the market that you're in. And so, yeah, it's nice to be objective. It's kind of nice to compare things, but like, but that's not the reality of what's actually happening on the ground. And so sometimes operating independently mm. is probably the best way to do it. I don't know. Right? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I disagree with that. I'm just saying, like, obviously I'm an expat. That's why I believe in like yeah. getting more information and being more objective and seeing and learning and mm -hmm. having better experiences. But not better, more experiences. But like, I just wonder, like as an expat, because I go there and like, obviously I have, I go to Canada, for example, and I have very conflicting opinions with my friends, with my family, with, with, um, with generally everybody on, you know, like people are afraid of COVID and people are so misinformed and people are so like sheep to just following, you know, a bunch of rules. And, and, and it's kind of like, yeah, very so, strange. But in, in, in their perspective, they're like, oh, look where you live. Like, it's a very kind of authoritarian, <laughs> kind of one directional relationship. Like the relationship of government to people is, is is in one direction. So who are you to tell me that I'm a sheep? Look at how, I mean, you don't even have the right to even say anything even if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a matter of... It's a perception. It's a perception, right? Yeah. So it's, so, so it's, it, it's just strange. I just wonder, like as expats, our reality is not their reality. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a, a right or wrong or objective or not, that's besides the fact. As expats, yeah. do we have a right to have an opinion? I mean, I'd like to think that I have a... It's not so much a right. I think a right to an opinion, it really depends what, what you're trying to do. Like, I have... Personally, I have an opinion on this stuff because this is... Dubai is not my forever. Dubai doesn't make but it's, this But it's money. your now. So, but no, no, so. no. It's my now. But at the same time, and this is the problem. So he, here's one of the, it touches on one of the main like downfalls of democracy, in my opinion. The main downfall of democracy is it's short term. Short term thinking when it comes to how everything is run. Decisions sure. are made. Leadership is governed. You know, when you think about this place here, or even Saudi, you talk about 2030, 2040 visions. There, there is an alignment. There is an understanding. A collective like plan that we're going to move into a direction you know take the uk is i don't want to speak to canada or the us i mean obviously like you can see it for yourselves but if i take it to the uk we have like a four or five year democratic process and you're talking about you know a, a process which spends a year to 18 months trying to gain power steve yeah you're we're sitting here mm -hmm. and think about what we're talking about we're talking about comparing the pros and cons of one governing system versus another, yep. which would have never been imaginable. You would never say there are cons of democracy. When? In any era. Oof, I don't know about that. No, no, I like, okay, let me speak for myself. Okay, yeah. Five years ago, I would yeah. never question the validity of democracy mm -hmm. because it was the, the singular kind of governing system that mm -hmm. really respected, let's say, the greater good of people perceived greater good of people sure whatever yep. but i never had a perception that it was anything else right? yeah and so today because of the pandemic mm -hmm. because of 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 economic kind of craziness going on or whatever yeah think about how that's shifted and like you i question it of course yeah. I, I think there are governing systems and governing kind of uh, pros and cons that should be considered depending on where we are as humanity and where we are in our life cycle of the country and what we want, do we want growth or do we want stability or do we want prosperity or do we want whatever, right? So I think I'm, I'm not saying that you're wrong to question and measure one system versus another. I'm just saying, what the fuck? We're measuring, <laughs> we're measuring and saying, oh, democracy that, has a downside. No, but that comes to it's your, crazy. that comes to your point um, earlier where you, you, you're saying with your age and with your wisdom, right? With, and more understanding. We spoke earlier just before you jumped on a on a call, where we, you know access to information, we have way more information today to make decisions, which is part of the chat, like, like part of the challenge that I'm, you know, when you think about it as a as a mainstream narrative, how information do you and misinformation of tons of it, right? right? So, so yeah. you have to try to form an opinion, and that's part of the problem. Like you, there's so much information there. How do you actually digest what's right and what's not, what's true and what's false? But that 
that kind of loss of control of kind of that yeah. that message to an extent is kind of what's created part think, of the unrest. I think I think basically what we're saying is democracy's ab- ability to lead effectively in moments of crisis yeah. is ineffective. Super ineffective. Right? And and But not just in moments but of But we're crisis. not questioning whether democracy is a good or bad system as a as a premise of how systems should represent people. We're just saying you know moments of crisis and the advent of fucking digitization in media and content creation mm-hmm. has destabilized a system and it's fucked like uh, unless we, we 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 retrofit shit with you know proper kind of uh trusting yep. uh systems, systems like 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 or digital trusting, ledgers or bitcoin yeah. or crypto or whatever Consensus, and you take the power yeah. out of people and put it into systems yeah then, then, then we're all fucking doomed. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not gonna, <laughs> we're not fucking doomed. But, I, but no, 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 but I don't disagree. I mean, I dramatize the shit out of it, but, but I find that crazy. So just, just before we move on to that, like one, one, the other thing that I was saying, the whole democratic process, that short termism is part of that problem. Cause it's not just about managing within a crisis. Yeah. It's actually the lead up to it. When I think about the last decade. So my, my first question marks on democracy came pretty much straight out of the financial crisis, 08, 09. Why? Because I think you and me are a similar age, definitely went through the same shit, lost work, ended up running two or three jobs just to make ends meet, back living with the parents, eventually got my career started down in London, eventually coming out the back of that, right? So that threw a question mark and kind of what actually took place there and what was actually happening to understand the system behind it. So that's where my kind of first step into, okay, this system, I understand the system here, but I'm not sure if I fully agree with it. But when we think about it today, you, you're right, coming out of the back of this, what do we want, what would I want to see coming out of the back of this? Well, number one in the UK, because that's the place that I care about, like democracy in its current state, in its current form, in that short termism, does not work. It does not fit the modern day era. It does not fit with democracy the digital. in its current state. In its current state. I do believe in the principles and the value system that comes with democracy, certainly not the violence. The democratic states have like shown but when i when i think about the principal aspect when i think about you know yeah i don't speech, think question how, like for me yeah. that, that they're important principles and if you were to go from if you were to like think from a design principle like stand in so how would i redesign democracy to fit for the modern day the, you know in in future generations based on the information and digital digitalization of everything i think genuinely for the west to kind of come out of this with society still behind it and a, and a state to govern, which I think people need governance for yeah. sure, then we have to rethink and redesign democracy with a in, in a in a very different way to how it's run today. Yeah, remove the bureaucracy of it if you can. Remove mm-hmm. the human corruption and yep. greed from it. Remove the influence of corporate and 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 ca- capitalist kind of brands. I mean, those are the flaws if you hyper simplify it, right? Yeah, so yeah. you have the bureaucracy of the system, yeah. you have the corruption mm-hmm. of its parties, and then you have the kind of influence of, of the market, economics of yeah. the market that screw up the whole thing, right? Which so which brings you on to money, yeah. which brings you on to your, the second point that you started this whole conversation with, which is what you're seeing in Canada. Yeah. Why in Canada have people in six months flipped from, oh, crypto is just a scam to holy shit, I need to participate for the same things that we are feeling here as well. Yeah. So that's that's kind of like my. I'd love to like bridge it now to Dubai, which is crazy. So as much as I, you know, I'm I'm super proud to be a part of of, of Dubai. It's it's startup ecosystem. It's it's growth and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. As much as I feel like, oh shit, I made it. You know, we <laughs> made like it for a fleeting second. Right. And and you know, as much as I like. I think everybody, and it's a global thing. It's not a Dubai thing, but we're starting to feel it like crazy here in Dubai. Dubai is like ranked at the top place to travel to, right? It's yeah, like TripAdvisor. Yeah, TripAdvisor it yeah. just came out a couple of days ago or whatever. And and absolutely, we feel that, right? And it's it's crazy. So, <laughs> you know, I used to live, uh, we just, just moved. I used to live in Dubai Hills. Um, and um, um, when I look at the prices, of, of what's happening, just the living, like let's say rent or, or even purchasing of a house, it's, yeah. it's jumped up a hundred percent. And some, right? 110, 120 percent. Like a hundred percent. In two years. In two years. It's just insanity. Right? So that's and, hyperinflation. And, and by that's, definition. that's great. I think generally speaking, if I'm Dubai, right? Mm-hmm. But if you think about. If you're an owner. Yeah. Dubai. If you think about the contributors 
And you think about the residents of Dubai who, you know, trying to catch a break, really mm -hmm. kind of making it. The cost of living just on a housing perspective is just it's it's crazy. Now, I know that it's not it's not a blanket kind of yeah. rule across. I think this really stands for family villas and compounds and stuff like that, probably more so than, let's say, apartments and stuff like that. So so I'm not it's not a blanket statement, but the cost of living generally for families is fucking it's gone. Like I thought I was a fucking baller. I am far from it. Right? Yeah. And 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 and. <laughs> Can't believe I said that out loud. Uh, <laughs> but but generally speaking, like the, flies business class casually to Canada. No? Yeah, I'm a G. No, <laughs> I'm but, a but but it's like no, you're not. You know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. Forward, right? Like literally, I just this like end of last year, beginning of this year, it's like it's been tough. Yeah, it's been super tough. Like the cost of living is up. You know, and and you know, and you speak to like who are these people that are coming and spending all this money? Like where's this mm. money coming from? Just before you go on to that, the the um. The villa piece was is obviously significant. Yeah. Like, like my story was that we were going to upgrade to that because we're obviously thinking about like what that next stage is. What does like starting and family look like here? Like it, it was within reach. I actually went to have viewings, and within oh, I need three months to unlock capital, and boom, that opportunity disappeared. Yeah. But apartment, like our apartment, jumped significantly. Now, thankfully, on average, if I look at it on average over a four year basis, it kind of equals out quite well. When I think about my my apartment over the course of four years, so that's quite good at the moment. But yeah, I like I I don't like which is that same feeling that I speak to friends in the UK and you probably do in Canada. I don't like that unsettled feeling of not knowing how quickly my prices or my cost of living is going to rise per what we can actually produce yeah. from a business point of view. That is an unsettling, unnerving, unnecessary. Yeah stress and, and on a, this it's, economy and it's across the board right it's like in every country right now the price mm -hmm. of properties whether to own or to insane. rent is through the yeah. roof insane the price of basic you know goods is through the roof right yeah. you look at I, the inflation rates in canada i don't think they've published any inflation rates over here but but I'm, yeah I'm i'd sure. imagine I'm, costs are going I'm, up. I'm sure I it's the same everything is imported mostly so I, i'm assuming we're, we're going to feel it too and that's fine i would but, say that we've been quite lucky here in terms of like food and produce like pretty like there's not been a shortage sure, which sure, is sure. Weird, not not in terms of shortage if it's true when i was in the grocery yeah. store in canada there were some aisles it's insane just, in the uk like there's like boxed up with stuff yeah it's true there were basic things that we couldn't find in canada that's true mm. that's that, that's, that's absolutely pretty true. fortunate here with that um it's, it's strange that we have better food security in dubai than we do in, in canada and the uk yeah. <laughs> anyway so um so um so it, it just feels like you know we just made it inflation is through the roof cost of living through the roof and, and 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 like listen sure like 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 fuck it we're gonna figure it out like of course that's it's what that's this fine. it's like a giant startup that's what we do yeah right? it's what we do and, and dubai is 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 leads by example it, it adjusts yeah. and it adapts to everything and 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 its residents and population will do the same right um, yeah. and i'm not worried specifically because i i know we can right size ourselves and i know that we can kind of figure it out but it's it's fucking hard like things are changing really really quickly yeah and and I think that's where we're seeing the adoption of crypto. That's where we're saying, okay, shit, guys, mm -hmm. if I keep my money in cash just in my account doing nothing, I'm basically losing a bunch of money every single day. Yep. And so I think whether it's Canada, whether it's Dubai, whether it's whether it's rich, middle class, or or, or, or or on the bottom of the kind of pyramid, everybody is saying keeping money doing nothing is basically money burning. It's money burning and it's and it's simply not mm -hmm. fair, right? It's a and okay. I mean you you know my point of view on this, like there is a social contract that doesn't physically exist, but is written. Yeah. If, when I give my time to a society and I'm productive yeah. and, and I, I sacrifice my time and, and I, I get, get a reward, reward, yeah, reward that reward gets taken away from me. Yeah, if you take that reward <laughs> away from me, yeah, you're fucking bang out of order yeah, like yeah. that. And especially if you do it outside of the, the kind of contracts that we've agreed. Yeah. So when it comes to crypto, like, you know, on one side, you have this like revolutionary, like kind of army, which I don't necessarily affiliate to. Like being more of a tech, like startup, like side, I you know I see like opportunity, prosperity, like change and innovation of what it can bring. But when it comes to things like Bitcoin, yeah, I'm I'm storing my wealth. My net worth is is valued in. I don't value my net worth in pounds, dollars, dirham. I value my net worth in Bitcoin because it's I'm sure the IMF wouldn't agree with you. <laughs> I'm sure the IMF would not agree with me. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Um, yeah, you'll have to check my Twitter to see the reference uh, of that. I'm pretty sure the revenue authorities will come after you now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I doubt that. But, I mean, Uncle you, Sam or no, who do you, who, who do you no, call who's, yours? 
what uh, in the UK? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. What's his name? Anyway. But the yeah. um, but no. So you know, denominating the net worth in net that hardest asset for me is super valuable, right? Because like that's my worth, like my time expended in the world, and it and just lost fifty percent. No? <laughs> just lost fifty percent. <laughs> Yeah, God damn it! Um, I get yeah, that point, man. But yeah, exactly. How do, how do you follow that? I'm just volatility. I know you are. Volatility, volatility is, is the name of the game. No, you're just fucking dickhead. <laughs> the yeah, volatility is the price you pay for an asymmetrical upside bet. But you know, sure, it's lost a ton of value in terms of the last what ten days. Sorry, no, sorry. no, no. You're fine. Let me just let me just say this point though. Yeah, it's yeah, lost sorry. value. What 20, 30, 40, 50 percent actually, probably from its all time high. But I'm pretty sure it's up. If we go from pre-pandemic like stage, we're talking like four, five hundred percent. to the choir. I'm totally with you. I'm just I know, saying, but like, they, yeah. this is a podcast. Is like other people going to watch this? Yeah, <laughs> I like, know. Oh, I'm terrified of the volatility. Yeah, well, guess what? Check the fucking value yeah, yeah, of your but currency. Not the, but it's not the only thing the that lost value. The, the volatility Everything. in the currency, the volatility in exactly. all the markets. Like fuck, from ETF to stocks to to, oh, to, to crypto to, to to currency, everything is getting but it, fucked. But, it, but it's it's. It's, it's, it's getting fucked on a short-term basis, but if you investment, and we, we've, we, we had an investment podcast, like what? We should probably have another one. We should have another one, actually. Yeah, it'd be really good to, because they, I mean, it's our guys, they even launched their crypto products, so we should yeah. have them back on. But when we, like, if you zoom in to like daily app price action, of course, so many things influence it, especially in a, in a world today, which is so many variables, so much information coming out. But fundamentally, you need to zoom. Like, if you're making investments, if you're not going to, I think Michael Saylor says this, right? If you're going to buy an asset, you're not going to hold it for like 10 years, 20 years. Don't fucking buy the asset. Yeah, yeah. Like, just stop trying to flip stuff because it's just not a way to actually retain your wealth. Sure, you could trade. You could speculate on certain things. That's absolutely fine. But if you're an investor like us, like the money that we earn here, the, the amount of effort and time that it takes, us yeah. away from family abroad in the UK or in Canada, or in Lebanon versus, and then we, we, we expend all that time. I want to put my value and wealth somewhere, which is going to grow and appreciate over a long period of time. So that when I want to tap into that, when I'm 50, 60, when I'm handing over to the next generation, note to boomers, hand over to the next generation, like step aside, like, you know, when I hand over, like I, I want to be able to hand over, step aside and actually then go yeah. spend that money in the economy. At the moment, like, it's like, I don't see that end path, that end state at the moment. That's what a lot of people are fearing. Like, where's my end state? Like, if you think of about it being a millennial, where's your end state? The where's problem your, is, what's the pension to, the problem to is you? The, like, the problem is the fucking narrative, right? <clears throat> so like, if you open any social media platform today mm. or read anything in media today, yeah. what are you reading? You're reading all time high. Jeff Bezos is worth over 200 billion. Yeah. Elon Musk is gonna fucking buy the planet. Uh, you know, <laughs> these Bitcoin bros are billionaires driving Lambos. Uh, we celebrate fucking overnight wealth. Well, not overnight, but like we, we celebrate ultra wealth and we celebrate kind yeah. of kind of riches, rags to riches stories like crazy. And everybody mm -hmm. is basically in their heart hoping that it happens to them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think if you really dig a little bit deeper, like. There are two motivations to people investing their money. There's what you're talking about, like mm -hmm. growing an asset over time, uh, believing that, you know, it's a long term play. But there's also that like kid inside you that also says, fuck, wouldn't it be amazing if I had a 50 X or a 30 X or 20 X in the next two years and fucking could call it quits right now. So we all inherently have that guilty pleasure inside yeah. of us where we're like, fuck it, like why would this fucking nerd yeah. from I don't know where be a billionaire because he fucking invested in Bitcoin in 2013 or whatever? Yeah. And why 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 can't that happen to me or whatever? And so everybody on the surface, such yeah, a human flaw, right? When you think intellectual about it. investor, yeah. I'm 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 playing the long term game. I'm I buy property. I, I dabble in ETFs. I I'm in like seven coins. I'm fucking long bullshit, man. Everyone is dreaming that they're gonna fucking strike gold, right? Literally. Yeah, but. Like right. that's the truth because, that, because we're conditioned to want that. Exactly. I was right? We're yeah. conditioned to want that. Right? Yeah. So like, even like, like, fuck it. Like I even put a, a bunch of money into like the subway ETFs and stuff. And I checked that shit on a fucking two days just to see how it's doing. They'd be so upset with you for checking that daily. No, no. It's so stupid. Yeah, yeah. It's an ETF. You don't fucking check it on a day-to-day -day basis, right? It's going to, it's a, if anything, look at it on a six month basis. Right. But it's like, no. it's crazy. Inherently we're conditioned to believe. Mm -hmm. that it's possible 
right? To that 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 we might get lucky. That that in our heart, having that that dream is okay. And I think, I think you open social media. Everyone's driving a fucking fancy car. You you know have a nice house, or we're celebrating some entrepreneur who's another billionaire unicorn founder. That's yeah. all we obsess about as a society. We obsess about wealth, 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 wealth. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's capitalism. Uh, we're at the peak of fucking capitalism, right? Where we're killing the planet, but we're still fucking making shit and buying shit and yeah. burning shit. And like the economy is fucked, but let's still give people money to make sure they buy shit so we can run the economy. Because like, that's how we measure success. It's crazy, right? And yeah, so yeah. fundamentally, wouldn't it be amazing if our generation fucking took their foot off the pedal just for a second? You know, and, and sat down around a table down. and had an open dialogue yes. and decided on a way forward, yes. an option, yes. open, open discussion. And we claim to be this generation that does we, that. we fucking the millennials fucking don't. You know, like, and and, and <laughs> come on. we claim to be the people of reason and conversation and empathy yeah. and fucking wokeness. I don't know. We don't we don't we don't generally do anything. Right. But we, we do. We do have an opportunity. Yeah, but we to, don't. We haven't. We haven't. Opportunity. opportunity exactly we haven't yeah. taken the opportunity because we're still caught up in in kind of that short again that short-term thinking and that that kind of misrepresentation of ideals and beliefs instead of just discussing like this is a good example we're gonna get super sidetracked here but this is a good like like pivot point 2016 when brexit happened in the uk i was super anti-brexit right that was just my stance on it based on the information i had at, at hand at the time i could not understand how that happened when I looked at my feeds and my like my network and it completely blew my mind. But in actual fact, I'd been, com- and this goes into the algorithm like space, I've been completely cornered and boxed into this one way of thinking. Post that, basically shutting down all of those platforms and starting to independently like follow people who had opposing views to me, some, my world opened up. When you start appreciating and following, particularly on social media, people with super jarring or opposing views to you, and you listen to their perspectives, and then you think about your perspectives and try to form an opinion that is a bit more balanced, the the mental challenge that you have and the critical thinking that you have to do and the outcome is incredible. So when we think about our generation, our generation is being irresponsible to this day at the moment by not seizing the opportunity to sit around a table and think of a way forward. And future generations need to come and sit around the table as well and have that conversation. It reminds me of that thing that we shared with the team and that we reposted on Twitter of the guy who was comparing kids born in the 70s, 80s, oh, 90s, yeah, really and 2000s. We should share that. Right? Oh, we did share it on Twitter, right? Yeah, on we should share it probably with the podcast yeah. when, we, when we do it. Maybe we could show it. Yeah. Mm. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Ow, ow, ow. Show them, girl. Yeah, boom. We are the fucking generation of fucking smoking mirrors and puffing smoke, right? Mm-hmm. Like we don't or According to the piece of content, the generations after us are even worse. But I'll even own up to that. Like, we don't, <laughs> we don't really. I mean, we're social warriors. You know, we're yeah. like, ah, this is bad. Retweet or share mm-hmm. emoji, angry face. Ah, I'm so, uh, I'm a protester. No, yeah. fuck. Like, if you believe something, I'm not saying go in the streets, <laughs> Man. but actually do something. Do something. Build something. Build contribute. Something. Contribute. Yeah. And 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 build shit that matters. Not. And I'm going to say this again. I'm sorry. I always, <laughs> I'm sorry. I always point at this industry, but <laughs> it's the greatest example. Not groceries in 20 minutes, not fucking everything in a heartbeat and the cheapest price you can get. That doesn't help anybody. Convenience is killing the planet. Exactly. Really is. Not everything has to be fucking convenient. No. Change is not convenient. Yeah. Right. And so, fuck, if anything, I guess this podcast is a realization that us included if we're gonna do something that fucking matters, we're gonna have to change the way we think and realize that convenience has led us down a path of fucking destruction. Mm-hmm. And we are more responsible than that as people and as generations. And, <clears throat> and fuck, like if you don't like the world you're living in, then then you have the responsibility to participate in it with 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 kind of full kind of 
I guess heart, man. You have to, you actually have to give a shit and try. Yeah, give a shit and try, but participate and speak up. Not just like, create content. No, 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 exactly. And not just whine, like from the other side. Like when it comes to participation, and 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 this speaks to a lot of the stuff that we we're just talking about with the whole COVID thing, right? People are like freaking out with democracy and freedoms and all of that stuff. Like at the end of the day, like we have to decide on a way forward collectively. And it's not one way or the highway. Like it is a change, it is a shift. So that's what, I guess you're right. That's what this podcast is. It's like maybe a first dive into some of the conversations that we have, which is we don't necessarily have all the answers, but there's an open discussion that needs to happen. How do we our get- Our generation is responsible. How do we get resources focused on the right things? That's the question. It's a good question. Whether it's VCs, mm-hmm. you know, tech talent, um leaders is going to mars the right is, is like escaping the planet the right thing i don't know i'm yeah. happy to have that discussion i'm sure it'll give a nice if share elon price wants to come on the show i'm sure it'll give a nice share price to spacex we'll accept dogecoin if elon comes on the show <laughs> <laughs> i'm joking we're never gonna accept dogecoin elon but yeah so so i think that's kind of that's the conclusion like yeah. how do we refocus what we're doing exactly as a as a, as a generation as a planet Anyhow, cool. That's good. It's fun. Thanks for listening to our bullshit. (laughs) Ciao.